come jump on my TARDIS as we go back in time to an era when graphics like this were pretty impressive. Now if you don't know a lot about Consortium, basically the things you need to know is that it was originally a Kickstarter game, uh, obviously successfully funded. I would compare it to a poor man's Mass Effect if Mass Effect was made in the 90s. So we're going to be grading Consortium by its looks, gameplay, plot and sound and voice acting. Good. Good. This is very good. Scores will be made out of 10 and at the end of it we'll mark up its overall score. They say you only get one chance to make a first impression and the first impression that Consortium gives off is very outdated. The game looks like it should have been released 15 years ago. It looks horrible. The textures are the worst I've seen in a game. Now granted it's made by a couple of people and it was a Kickstarter campaign but come on guys. This literally looks like it just came out of a university student's final project. Everything looks just slapdashed half ass from the character models to the recharging your utility meter to the bullets to the guns, switches and the ship itself. Everything just looks so bad. It doesn't look good. And it initially put me off the game. It looked that bad especially for the price they're charging for it. For this reason alone, for looks, I'm going to give it 3 starships out of 10. But now let's talk about the gameplay, and this is where the game kind of improves. I mean, the most important thing about games is the gameplay. If it looks like Crisis 3, but plays like Walking Dead Survival Instincts, you're not going to want to play it for too long. And I feel like Consortium is what Mass Effect could have been if it was made in the 90s. But that's not a bad thing, even the developers let you know where they got their inspiration from. When you first meet Wade or Rook9, you'll get an option to compare him to Joker. <laughs> well, you know, life's just too bloody short to be an uptight bastard all the time. Obviously a reference to Mass Effect's pilot of the Normandy, Joker. You can affect and change the world around you depending on how you respond to questions. If you have a Kingpin mercenary talking to you, you can either suck up to him and play his little mind games to try and earn his trust. I am in a good mood. The bishop here has certainly amused me enough. Let me hear your proposal. Or you can tell him to shove it where that Bulgarian sun doesn't shine and engage in a gunfight with him and his men. This offers replayability if you do choose to play the game again. Seeing for yourself how choosing your answers differently can affect you, yourself and the game around you. But in terms of actual combat, the game is pretty awful. NPCs will often just stand there taking your fire while rarely making a dent in your armor or health pool. And if they actually do somehow manage to damage you, you can just repair your health and armor over time by using the heal or repair buttons on your hotkey. The only time I ever found myself having any sort of difficulty was when you're asked to defend the ship from enemy missiles. And this part of the game really stressed me out. You need to be pinpoint accurate with that laser or you're going to die repeatedly like I did. But the gameplay isn't all bad. It's not great either. It's very slow to start off with. But with the ability to break the fourth wall with your answers, it does add a certain entertaining kick to the game. Sadly though, the game ends just as it starts to pick up steam and becomes more interesting. It is the first part of a free part aren't so it kind of adds a little cliffhanger to the upcoming games. Even after the patch was applied that was meant to fix crippling bugs, the game is still very buggy. I had repeating sound vibes. It's Rook 25. NPC is blocking exits permanently so I couldn't leave. I had trashed the desktop and I had the strange bug of where my NPCs would talk really slowly when opening my infantry. <laughs> This kind of caused me to lose track of what was saying. Oh yeah, and there was that tiny bug where my save games randomly kept being deleted. Thanks for that consortium. Sadly, the gameplay for consortium is average at best, so I'll give it an above average score of 6 starships out of 10. And now onto the plot or story of the game. The plot begins stating that a new technology has been made that plants you in the body of another person in a parallel earth in the year 2042. 
Oddly enough, Charlie Sheen is still winning in this universe. Winning? But you're told that you will have complete control over the human and will be in charge of either improving the world around you or throwing it into anarchy. You log onto the wormhole and end up controlling a man known as Bishop Six, a soldier assigned to Lee Senlil, one of the consortium's largest commanding aircrafts. Now, the consortium is the world's dominant military and governing force being established after World War III. Moments after starting, the ship is put under attack by a rather low-ranking band of mercenaries and you're reassured that everything will be fine. Or will they? The game tackles subjects such as murder, political tensions, religious paranoia, and traitors amongst the crew, all while giving you the option to either smooth things over calmly or go in guns blazing, raising hell. As I said before, the game sadly ends just as it's picking up steam. It's pretty slow for 90% of the game, and it takes place pretty much entirely on the Sendil. So I'll give it six starships out of 10. And now we finally come up to the point where Consortium shines in my opinion, the sounds and voice acting of the game. At first, I'll admit I wasn't a fan. I thought it sounded really bad with very bad stereotypical accents and monotone voice acting from certain characters. <coughs> Kieran, <coughs> Kieran. This is untrue, Bishop. We have equal tasks to adhere to according to strict Consortium protocol. But as the game progresses, you realise that he's not just a terrible voice actor, but that's just the way Kieran is, an emotionless, even socially awkward sounding person. This pawn is dead. No shit, Kieran. Your lack of compassion, brother, is really getting on my nerves. Also, the music and sounds that go with the game are brilliant, from the ambient sounds of the ship to the shots being fired from the gun. At least... On this end of the game, it seems polished and well worked on. And purely because of the voice acting alone, which I really enjoy for the most part, I'll give the game seven starships out of 10. So overall, what does Consortium get? It's not a great game. I definitely wouldn't pay the 15 pound price tag they're charging for it at the moment. It's one of them games that I'd wait for it to be 75% off in a Steam sale to purchase it. It looks outdated, gameplay can be slow and boring at times, but this is counterbalanced by the solid plot, strong dialogue and impressive voice acting. It's still plagued with irritating bugs, but that will be ironed out in future patches I imagine, so overall Consortium earns a 5.5 out of 10. So that's it for a, another classic top hat review brought to you by a screen robot guys, remember to like the Facebook page, follow me on Twitter, and go check out ScreenRobot.com for more gaming reviews like this one, guys. Remember to stay classy, guys. Stay classy. Wait, we can do this.